I just okay. People are joining. There's Molly. Okay, well, uh, welcome to Slow Jam Fizz, everybody. I can't tell you how excited I am about this session with one of my favorite fiddlers to play with and to listen to. So uh, take it away, Jimmy. He's playing solo today, so the rest of us will just have to figure out what the chords are on our own. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Jimmy, and I'm going to mute myself and unspotlight myself. Yeah, thanks, Maxine. Thanks, Brendan. Hey, everybody. Um, nice to see everybody out there. You can see little thumbnails of people, so <laughs> hi, hi to thumbnails. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, play some tunes uh, in cross G and uh, hopefully there it'll work out that you could play along um, so I don't know I think the best thing to do might be just to jump right in and play a tune so I'm gonna play uh, the first tune that I was gonna play is from uh, Lee Hammond's <clears throat> it's his version of greasy string I'd say it's a pretty easy tune to follow along on and, and to play and can't, I can't really think of what chords. I'm sure it's G. <laughs> there might be a D in there too for the guitar. But anyway, so this is Greasy String.
How was that? Was it, uh, is it working out out there? Great. So, so yeah, I might do it. Uh, let let uh, maybe Maxine, you can let me know if it's if it's coming through and every everything sounds good. Thumbs up means good to go, right? Yeah, it sounds great. Okay. Looks good. Sounds good. Thanks, Jimmy. And enough speed, not too fast, not too slow. Yeah. And that tune, uh, that was from Lee Hammonds. At that and that wasn't a fiddle player that I ever met. He he passed away way before I ever got around to playing fiddle. Um, so that was he was, uh, um, you know, playing many many years back and uh, recorded by Dwight Diller and uh, Jerry Milnes and uh, Wayne Howard. <clears throat> and I think I, that greasy string, I'm pretty sure I got off of a recording that Dwight made, but maybe Jerry as well made recordings of that tune. And <clears throat> I guess I should have given a heads up that it normally the high part just goes through one time rather than <clears throat> two times. But I, I thought about doubling it up for the sake of the jam, but I guess um, since it's kind of slow, it's it was okay to keep it that way. But uh, let's see, I'll pick another tune here. This one might be, um, I, I think of this tune as a, as easy hard. I mean, it, it's not that, that tricky of a melody. And um, so uh, we can see if it's maybe pick upable. It's, it doesn't have lots of notes or anything like that, but it's quirky in that it's just crooked in a, in a distinctive kind of way. And this one I think has been out there for a while. So I've probably, maybe some of you have heard it before. It's called Hell Up Coal Holler from uh, Andrew Burnside. And, uh, I mean, I, I could tell the story of learning how to play this tune. Uh, you know, for, I first got a hold of some really awfully distorted recordings of uh, Andrew Burnside and, and couldn't even tell what the heck was going on to figure out the tune. But then sometime back in the, the 90s, uh, John Cuthbert from the, um, the uh, Archive of, uh, of uh, History at, in West Virginia University brought a videotape an actual videotape uh, of uh, um, of a film that had been made at Glenville, the West Virginia State Folk Festival, back in the probably the fifties. So it was some clips from the festival that had then been transferred to videotape. He brought it with him to do a presentation, and on that tape was uh, several people, but in, um, one of them was uh, Andrew Burnside. So I got to to. Um, I basically asked if I could go hide out in a room with that tape and a TV and my fiddle, and I watched it over and over again until I learned the bowing from it. So that was way back in the days before YouTube and so much, you know, easy access. I, I mean, I was wondering, remembering this, and thinking, you know, I wonder if that that clip is out there, but it doesn't seem to be yet. So that's one that we need to track down and um, get on some publicly available space. But this is Hell Up Coal Holler. And I think one of the parts is like two times through and the other one is three times through. But
caller. <clears throat> How was the speed on that? I wasn't going too fast for a slow jam, was I? Was that one uh, pick upable on the banjos, or is it is it odd? Uh, <laughs> seems okay. Okay. It's funny. It's like I'm watching a silent movie when when I'm watching you guys talking back, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I, I can fully understand. So let's see. Whose tune? Whose tune was that? Andrew Burnside. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Let's see. <clears throat> play uh, a tune that comes from Harvey Sampson and then I, I kind of adjusted it a little bit to be it's got elements of Melvin and maybe Ward Jarvis to sort of I don't know to suit my Boeing a little bit better than Harvey's um, but this is a tune that he called maybe he just called it old bulldog or bulldog or somebody stole my old bulldog and I wish they'd bring him back so at different times he sort of called it different things, but uh, Bulldog is sort of the, I guess, the running title or Old Bulldog. It's kind of a version of Sandy Boys, though. Um, so I'm going to give it a try. This is one that I, I would say falls into the category of uh, my new tunes or more like the tunes that I'm learning. So I thought since it's a slow jam, it might be fun to play some tunes that I, you know, I would like to play out more this summer. So, so we'll get them into circulation. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's, what do you guys think of that tune? I think it's a pretty nice version of uh, Sandy Boys or Someone Stole My Old Bulldog. Did Harvey have words to that? Yes. So some, someone stole my old bulldog. They took him far away. I heard him something in the wilderness just before the break of day. Heard him howling, maybe? I can't remember. I'll have to, I'll have to go back and revisit that. Yeah. And other words, too. I think there was a whole song to it. Kind of the, the yeah. Yeah, can't think of any others off the top of my head, though. But, yes. Questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> Are we doing okay? I just realized that we, I think you hadn't said that you were tuned to GDGD, so I just put that in the chat. And uh -huh. banjos in G, regular G, whatever G tuning you like. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm in cross G, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> How about a Melvin tune? So uh, this is uh, one of his uh, his great uh, cross tune pieces, Walk Chalk Chicken. Uh, maybe that's one that everybody knows, but it's a fun one to play and it's a little bit tricky, but I like it a lot. So uh, let's give that one a try. I'll try not to play too fast because this one has got a lot of notes, I guess. Or maybe it doesn't, I don't know. <laughs> So this is Walk Chalk Chicken with a necktie on from Melvin Wine. fast maybe too fast okay. you can either you can it's whatever feels musical to you
shelf chicken with a necktie on. That's a tricky tune, I think. Maybe that one was a borderline jam buster. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully not. I hope it wasn't too uh, too hard, especially to pick it up if you've never, ever heard it before. To some of you, that might be an old standard, but others, maybe you've heard that was the first time you've ever heard that tune. But it's a great old fiddle tune from Melvin Wine. Uh, and I always wondered about the name. I can't remember if I ever asked him about it, whether it was one that uh, he got it with name and all from his father or if uh, the name came from the tune came from his dad but maybe the name came from his brother or something it sounded but i think it was an old name come to think of it i'm pretty sure that one is yeah Rather than i always one. kind of wondered where the walk chalk thing came from because we were just in lawrence kansas and i think that the team at the university of kansas there kansas university is the jayhawks and all over town there's these signs to say walk chalk jayhawk Walk Chalk Jayhawk. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe it just sounds good, Walk Chalk, yeah. but it's an interesting, it makes me wonder if it's an old phrase meaning something or has some old reference that's lost. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. Well, we need to look that up then. All right. Let's see. How about, um, how about a tune that is easy to pick up and fun to play, um, like Ernie Carpenter's Horneo? Do you guys know that tune? So, and if not, um, it's a great tune. It's a, it's a easy one to pick up and a fun one to play. And it comes from Ernie Carpenter. Uh, it's horny O. The, the O part is actually spelled E-W-E. -E. It's horny U. But for, for whatever reason, the, the old timey name of it was horny O. Um, and Melvin played a tune called horny O as well. And he didn't actually make the connection or didn't realize the sort of the the carpenter tradition of it referring to a U. And so I think when I asked Melvin, what was a horneo, he said, just a sort of a kind of a monster. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, but so this is horneo from Ernie Carpenter. Play this one a little bit slower. Thank you. 
it's a uh, Hornio from Ernie Carpenter. Let's see. So we're still playing in cross G, cross cross tuning G D G D on the fiddle. Tunes that could be played in G or in A easily enough. Um, and oh no, I've got a few others on the list here. Um, any questions or? Uh, any, any issues? Nothing? All right, let's see. So a couple of the tunes that I have on the list there are like kind of old classics and then a few are things that maybe you haven't heard before. Maybe I'll try one of those haven't heard before tunes <laughs> and uh, put this out there. Maybe somebody will recognize it and can tell me more about it. But one of the tunes I wanted to, to share is a tune that comes from a fiddle player named Dewey Hamrick who lived in Randolph County, West Virginia. I never met Dewey Hamrick, but I met his son, Merle Hamrick, who was also a fiddle player and, uh, and spent a bunch of time with him. And, uh, but I, I got a hold of recordings of Dewey and uh, Dewey Hamrick learned or was around different members of the Hammonds family, including old Pete Hammonds and, uh, and of course, Eden. Uh, and then he heard um, a lot of the, like the Webster County fiddle players play as well. Um, and, uh, and then he spent a lot of time with uh, Woody Simmons as well. And so I feel like he's got a mix of tunes that are very old and also some that are newer tunes. But this one tune, and then I should also say that there's a possibility that he wrote some tunes. I have no, I mean, he, apparently he wrote Punch and Floor as played by the Ham, Hamrick family. So, uh, um, so the version that he played, apparently he, he composed. But anyway, this is a tune that's called Poor Folks, Poor Folks. And uh, I haven't heard it anywhere else, so maybe somebody can tell me if they recognize it or if, it, if it's really just a, you know, something else. But uh, let's see if we can get this one. <laughs>
that's poor folks. Anybody heard that one before? Or does it sound like something else? Or is it something else? It is reminiscent of something, but I can't quite place what. Yeah, I know. I either either I've played it with you before, or <laughs> I've heard it somewhere before. It's got a structure a little bit like um, Pokeberry Blossom that the Hammonds played. So, how about a uh, fiddle tuning switch, but a key? The key will stay the same. I'm going to move over to the standard tuning fiddle um, for a few tunes. Um, so that'll it'll be in still in the key of G, but instead of being G D G D. It's going back to GDAE, standard tune fiddle, which I have right here. So the name for that last tune was Poor Folks, Poor Folks, <laughs> Poor Folks, like, yeah. And it's from Dewey Hamrick, who was from Randolph County, West Virginia, and thereabouts. <clears throat> so I want to try to play a, uh, a tune that it comes from a fiddle player from south uh, southwestern West Virginia, down the, like real close to the border with uh, Kentucky. Uh, it's a fiddle player named Sherman Gore, and he, I, there he was recorded by somebody, and I think it was Pat Gaynor or a friend of Pat Gaynor's, but somehow the re the reel to reel recording ended up in the Gaynor collection, which is now in the West Virginia um, Archive of Music and History in West Virginia University. I don't know that it's been made available yet. Um, I mean, the tapes are out and kind of in circulation, but um, you know, sort of bootleg, but um, not that you can go and find it online somewhere. But he's a really great fiddle player. Probably, I would I would say that he's my all time favorite. Except that there isn't a lot to go on. There's only like maybe five tunes, five or six that have been um, were recorded. But I just love the way he played things, and so I want to play his version of Wild Horse, um, which is is pretty easy to pick up. And Wild Horse is one of those tunes that I think everybody has heard. If you've heard much old time music, Wild Horse or Stony Point, but I really like this version of this tune. So let's see if we can play this one. <clears throat> Thank you. 
<laughs> so that's a that's a nice version. I like that one a lot. Uh, that was from Sherman Gore. Yay. <laughs> hey, Paul. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. I want to play a Melvin Tan that uh, doesn't have a name that, that I know of. Melvin didn't know the name for it. At one point, he asked, um, he played it for Woody Simmons, or he played it around Woody Simmons, and Woody Simmons told him that it was done gone, um, which it isn't. <laughs> but that was um, what Melvin called it for a while. But uh, I've, I've found one other recording of the melody. Um, it was uh, as played by a fiddle player named Warren Cronin, who uh, was from a little bit... Uh, well, I can't remember exactly where. I just I've drawn I'm drawing a blank on where he lived in West Virginia. It'll come back to me in a second. But he was he was north of uh, Melvin, and uh, he called it the um, Jim Lawson's reel. So it didn't have a name either. It just was you know a tune that um, has lost its name. But it's a it's a nice old tune. So uh, let's try this one and it's in G and it, it uses a lot of the same notes that we just used for wild horse so that'll make it easy tune 
sometimes called Dungong, but not really Dungong. <laughs> so does anybody know that tune and recognize it by any other name? Oh, you not you had not heard that one before. Oh my. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. I'll play. Let's see. Maybe that that tune would be okay. That's a cute little tune. Not much to it, but I like it. It's a Jim Hollis tune. Uh, Jim Hollis, he may even, I don't know, he probably, he's, he might still be alive. I'm not sure, but he was a, a fiddle player from northeastern West Virginia. Uh, real close to Maryland, actually, but, but in a very rural part of the, the country there. And he played a bunch of old, really good old tunes. Uh, and I met him one year when he came to Elkins for the Old Time Fiddlers Reunion at the Augusta Heritage Center, uh, which was a really great program that um, brought in fiddle players from all around the state, uh, mostly uh, thanks to the hard work of Jerry Milnes um, tracking folks down and bringing them in. Um, but uh, Jim Hollis uh, was one of the fiddle players that came over one of the years I was there. And so I got to know him, and then uh, he later sent me a a cassette tape loaded with tunes and so this was one of the tunes that he put on there that is uh, called old hang on and i i'm sure that some of you can tell me that it's actually something else and i off the top of my head i'm not sure what it is maybe old aunt jenny or something but anyway that'll that'll be the the mystery for the day right here you guys can tell me what what tune this really is but <clears throat> it's old hang on got hints of other tunes in there but uh, yeah 
Ah. Cool. Let's see. How about Phoebe Parsons' Cabin Creek? Um, by request from Maxine. So this is a tune that I got from a banjo player, and it's a case of my uh, me using my artistic liberty a little bit because uh, there isn't a recording of it on the fiddle, but uh, other people play it on the fiddle, and so I took inspiration from like Ernie Carpenter for parts of it, and um, but just the distinctive way that um, Phoebe played it on banjo, um, it, it suggested a fiddle tune to me. I could hear it in the distance. It wasn't exactly like sort of, I'm not playing exactly note for note what she played. I'm kind of hearing this fiddle that would go along with it. So this one is a, uh, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, creative liberty, like I said. But uh, I like this one a lot. So, um, but it's been a while since I played it too. So <laughs> here, here goes nothing. Um, but this is Cabin Creek from Phoebe Parsons. That, that tune was like the soundtrack of this pandemic for me ever since your quarantine happy hour. <laughs> uh, I just want to, uh, since it's 6.30, a 
go as long as you want. Still got 36 people here. So play as long as you feel like it. Uh, thanks everybody for coming in. Next time is March 25th with AJ Shrubus and Rena Rossi. Should be some cool Midwest tunes and all kinds of other stuff. So uh, anyway, thanks everybody. And thank you, Jimmy and keep playing. Yeah, thank you, Maxine. Thank you for putting this on, Maxine and Brendan. This is a, an, an awesome program to to be able to turn to and to track down all the, the, the recordings that are out there available. So that's really great. Um, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely willing to play a little bit more. I have a few more tunes on the list, so I might as well play those. <laughs> um, and the tune was Cabin Creek, that last one, and I saw it pop up there. But Catman Creek sounds good, too. Um, but Cabin Creek was the name. Um, but let's see. I was thinking about um, maybe two or three more tunes in G in this tuning, and then maybe a couple of tunes in modal to finish off, something like that, if it, nobody minds changing for the last two tunes. Um, so maybe I'm looking down at this list. I see George Hammond's tune. That's a, a good one um, from Ernie Carpenter. I kind of like to play that tune. Maybe Waiting the Cheat, maybe Elk River Blues, any any uh, druthers <laughs> amongst those three. Maxine? Or anybody? Elk River Blues. Uh, Waiting the Cheat, and what was the other one? And George Hammonds. George Hammonds, yeah. Let's That's my, my preference. Stars, and then uh, Waiting the Cheat is uh, the one that, it's actually Old Jim short tune from Mose Kaufman. Um, but I got in the habit of calling it waiting the cheat as I posted on that Facebook uh, uh, note. Um, that was the name that uh, when I played this tune for Wilson Douglas or that tune, um, old Jim short tune, he said, oh, yeah, that's the one that Burl Hammonds played and called waiting the cheat. And I couldn't believe it when he told me that. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it was pretty cool. But this is George Hammonds' tune. So George Hammonds was a itinerant uh, f farmer or farm hand that would come and stay with the carpenters from time to time, and he was also a fiddle player, and so and then he would you know he would come for like the, the field season I guess and then go off again over the winter or something like that, and uh, so when he was staying with the carpenters, um, you know they played a lot of music, and this was one of those tunes that Ernie picked up by way of George Hammonds I guess po probably from his father, but. Uh, uh, anyway, but the, the name was lost. It's sort of in the kind of the shelvin rock sort of um, vein of tunes, but... <laughs> Thank you. 
George Hammond's is tuning in. So, and I don't know that Arnie played that one very much. He just happened to think of it and play it a couple of times through at one of those Augusta Heritage, um, you know, master artist visits sessions that Augusto fortunately uh, recorded. So, but aside from that, I don't know if he ever played it again, you know, I mean, during that period where he had gotten back to playing. So we're lucky to have that tune. Um, and let's see. And then this other tune comes from Mose Kaufman. It's called um, the old Jim Short tune. Jim Short was a fiddle player that, shoot, now I've forgotten the history of, or the connection between Jim Short to, uh, to Mose Kaufman. I forget the name of the fiddle player in between that um, Mose learned it from. But uh, uh, anyway, this was an, an old tune that came from a, a fiddle player that um, worked in the logging camps around, I think it was Webster Springs. And uh, anyway, it made its way back to Mose Kaufman, but they lost the name along the way. And uh, so it was just the old Jim Shorts tune, <laughs> which sounds terrible, but that's the, that's the name. But then I played this tune for um, old Jim, like J-I-M, Jim Short, Jim Short, <laughs> James Short. <laughs> we should call it the old James Short tune rather than the Jim Shorts tune. Um, but... Um, I played it for Wilson Douglas and he like with, without like, you know, even hesitating, he said, Oh, that's a tune that Burl Hammond's played that was called waiting the cheat. And I, you know, I couldn't believe it when he said that, like, you know, it just, it sounded um, impossible that he would have heard this, this weird tune. But anyway, here's this tune that Mose played and Mose liked talking about how, how squirrely this tune was because it, it just runs, in a way that's different than uh, a lot of other tunes. And one of the things that's really special about this tune to me is that it, it was uh, it was my jumping off point for meeting and learning from old fiddle players, um, you know, because I think before this time, I thought that old time music was only to be found on on old recordings and records and things like that. But then it turned out that uh, there were still old time fiddle players alive. I mean, like the, you know, the, the ones that had learned it from way back in the day before recordings. Um, so that was probably 1993 or 94 when I got to go and listen to Mose Kaufman in person. I had heard him on record before that, but, but then I was like, what? He's still alive? And so I went and uh, spent some time with him and then learned this tune from him. So Jim Short, or Waiting the Cheat.
maybe a modal tune or two to finish up. Maybe the, uh, I want to play uh, one one modal tune before we're all done. Is a modal okay? Can everybody get to that easily enough? That would be. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what to say about the guitar. Probably A, key of A. <clears throat> but I'm thinking of a tune from Lee Triplett. Um, it's called Hall Guide Man, um, his version of Hall Guide Man. And uh, this is a recording, or this is a tune that I got from a recording that was made by Jeff Gehring at Glenville, um, at the West Virginia State Folk Festival. And I was very lucky to um, to, to just to cross paths with Jeff and to uh, you know and for him to share this recording with me it was uh, it was actually on one of the back back when I was on the road with Don and the Buffalo when I was playing drums for them we stayed with uh, with Jeff and Susie and then Jeff let me like sort of rummage through his tapes and uh, I happened to come across this recording of Lee Triplett from Glenville and I think it was just him and Jeff like you know uh, talking about tunes and Lee Triplett played his version of Hall Guide Man and to my knowledge that's the only recording of this tune that that uh, that Lee Triplett made so so it's, uh, it's nice that it, it was preserved thanks to Jeff Gehring <clears throat> but this is Hall Guide Man How about one last tune? And uh, what I was thinking of is if it's in this tuning, I can't remember if it is, I'm pretty sure it is. Stacked them up in piles from Melvin Wine. I don't know if that one is in circulation or if people play that one. It's a, it's a beautiful old tune though. Or that, let's see, let's see if that's in this tuning. I think it is, or in this key, I mean. It's, 
that's in, uh, I believe that's in, um, maybe that's in just regular A. I'm not sure, but uh, that or New Orleans, which one do you prefer for to finish off on? We'll let Maxine pick it. <laughs> uh, stack them up in piles because I mean both of them, but nobody plays that, so I'd love to hear you play it. Okay, let's play that one. Stack them up in piles. piles thank you all thanks everybody for listening in and i'm uh, i'm real happy to have been able to share tunes with you oh i didn't mean to do that i i replaced his spotlight with my spotlight
Ah. There he is. Hi. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Jimmy. That was fantastic. Really great. So beautiful. Thanks. Uh, Here's to work on before the next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that was great. Yeah, well, I hope everybody had fun and uh, yeah. maybe we'll play some of these tunes in person sometime. Yeah, maybe this summer. I sure yeah, hope so. Yeah, I sure hope so. Thank you, Jimmy. That was just a treasure trove. Yeah, it really was. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Well, thanks again. yeah. Take care. Bye. All right. Can I stay on this uh, Zoom? Can I read the chat? Sure. I'll send it to you. But you can leave it.